The typical CMBS loan will look like this. It will normally be a fixed rate loan. Um, that means the, the interest pay, the interest rate will not <coughs> adjust over time. Um, the term on the loan, if you recall, Kevin's loans are normally structured with a three or five year term because he's, he's placing short term money and needs to get his money back. Our terms are about 10 years and oftentimes we can even go out to 15 years. Kevin's going to structure his loan basically on a 15 or 20 year amortization. We're going to structure ours mostly on a 30 year amortization. That's a big point to remember because but the amortization, if you recall when Beth did her presentation, she talked about how you could do your amortization on a residential loan. And you see how your debt service moves based on the amortization. You know, you do a 15-year amortization, your debt service goes up. You do a 30-year amortization, it's much lower. So in residential, a lot of times you're encouraged to go ahead and do a shorter amortization. It's your house. You want to pay this thing off. Well, these are apartment complexes. These are shopping centers. These guys are just in it for the cash flow. They don't really care if they own some of these, some of the older guys that came out of the Depression era, they want to own everything. <laughs> but um, some of the newer guys that are doing these deals, they don't really care if they ever own these properties. So they keep their debt service extremely low so that they can keep their cash flow up. And a 30-year amortization allows you to do that. You cannot do a 30-year amortization at the local bank. Well, you know, you can't walk in a southern community or first community and get a 30-year amortization loan. You've got to go to the capital markets to be able to do that. Our loans are non-recourse. That's a big point. His loans, Kevin's loans will be recourse, meaning that, you know, if Bradley here fails on his loan, they're going to come after everything Bradley has that, that, that they can come after in order to get their money back. Our loans are non-recourse. That means Bradley doesn't have to guarantee the note. The property and the asset itself guarantees the financing. So if his property fails, we can't come after Bradley. The only thing we can do is come after that property and take over management of the property. Um, our loans will be structured with escrows and reserves. A lot of times if you go to the local bank, they may say, hey, you don't have to pay taxes and insurance <coughs> reserves and those kind of things. Well, with a, with a CMBS loan, you will always have to be escrowed <coughs> for taxes and insurance and also what we call replacement reserves, mainly because that bond has been sold off to investors. So after that bond has been sold, we don't want any risk that that property may, be get, that may, that property may get taken, either because you didn't pay the taxes on it or because you lost your insurance or because you had some a roof r repair that you needed fixing and you just didn't have the money to do it. So we try to escrow for all those types of things. Normally, if you're looking at an apartment deal, you're going to escrow about $250 per unit for replacement reserves. If you're looking at commercial real estate like office buildings, shopping centers, those types of things, you're going to escrow about $0.20 cent per square foot for replacement reserves. Just some properties that we normally take a look at that are what we call in-the-box properties. And this is, you know, keep this in mind because CMBS, we will not finance a lot. There's a lot of things that we will not finance. We normally strict, stick with the more investment type properties. So like multifamily, self-storage, hotels, um, retail, industrial R&D. Those are just some of the properties that we actually will, will finance through CMBS. Um, these are some of the properties that we would consider out of the box. We're not going to be looking at bowling alleys. We're not going to look at um, you know, golf courses. We don't do any single family homes. We don't do any properties under construction. Because properties under construction are what we call non-stabilized properties. They're not stable, so we can't put them into the bond. Just a couple of deals that I've actually worked on in my, my short career. Um, and I'll just let you flip through those as, as, you, as you like. Yeah, we got about a minute. We're supposed to come to hit the door. <laughs> just real quickly, because um, I know you guys will be ready to get out of here, just to give you guys sort of a, an idea of what happened to get us to the point that we're at right now. Um, you may have heard um, Beth mention something about conduits. Conduits are the in entities that actually do these CMBS loans. They call them conduits because they put all their loans into a warehouse line, then they securitize all of those loans, and they move them into the secondary market. Now, back in the summertime, we had what we call SIVs. Those are structured investment vehicles. And the way structured investment vehicles fund themselves is they issue commercial paper in the money markets. Commercial paper normally expires every 30 to 45 days, the longest maturity on commercial papers a year. They take the money that they get out of the money markets, they place it long term by buying CDOs. 
which are collateralized debt obligations. Those CDOs were secured by subprime mortgages, and a lot of these guys didn't know that, or they didn't understand the, the, the difficulty or the challenge of holding those kind of assets. Now, right now, I've already identified a major flaw with the way these guys did business. They took short-term money, and they bought long-term assets. It just it doesn't work. It works as long as, enough, as long as you can continue to refinance your short-term debt and the money markets are liquid, it works. But when the money markets freeze up, like they did over the summertime, and you can't keep getting that short-term money, then the strategy just, it just goes all, all bad. And you've got to start selling the assets that you have on your balance sheet in order to keep your funding going. So that's what happened over the summer. All these guys start dumping their assets, trying to get their assets sold so that they can keep their funding going. Typically, a spread on a CNBS loan would be about 100 basis points over the 10-year Treasury yield. The 10-year yield today is at 3.6. If I was doing a deal a year ago, I would have priced you at 4.6. When the SIV started to crash, they, they completely blew up the CNBS market as well. So our spreads went from about 100 over to 300 over. So if I was doing your deal today, I'd price you at about 6.6. .6. Well, that's a considerable difference if you're a developer, and it really starts to restrict your loan proceeds. Remember that debt service coverage ratio that Kevin talked about? Well, if you can't hit that, then we have to restrict your loan proceeds. So that's some of what started to happen. Um, the conduits will definitely be on the sidelines throughout the rest of this year. We probably won't be doing a lot of loans. We'll hit that $100 billion mark, but that's probably about it. Our spreads are going to remain at about that 300 basis point mark over. But the conduit market will return mainly because of this. You've had a large, a lot of what we call large portfolio deals, $100 million deals and up. You've heard of the Blackstone buyout and those kind of things. Um, insurance companies and some of your portfolio lenders cannot handle that kind of capacity. CNBS lenders are designed to handle that kind of capacity. So they will be back to the market, but it's just going to take us a little bit of time to get ourselves back, back reorientated, I guess you could say. Um, I'll take a couple of questions if you have any before you head out of the room. All right, thank you.